what is this, the third time that we've done this? Yeah, third time. Third time, right? Yeah, only three. Last time was a couple of years ago in a little motel off, yeah. the, off the freeway in, yeah. uh, in Marshall, Texas, right? Yeah, huge, huge town in Marshall, Texas. It's been, uh, it's been quite a road you've been blazing, my friend. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it doesn't feel like I'm blazing. It, it just feels like it's happening. And I'm along for the ride, and I'm okay with it, and because mm-hmm. uh, I don't feel like I'm in control <laughs> most of the time. It's a yeah. it's a surrender, man. It you, totally you're letting is. go. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're being guided. I yeah. think. Yeah. I, yeah. I think so too. Well, it's been a while since you've been on the show. The hardcores, the longtime listeners, know mm-hmm. your story well, mm-hmm. but uh, the show's grown quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. So I think it would be helpful to just recap your story a little bit. I don't want to dwell on it because we've gone into it sure. so much in other episodes, but for the people that are new, uh, let's like take a look back for a minute. Yeah. Well, look back is, uh, you know, a kid on the bayou in, in South Louisiana, um, living the dream of hunting and fishing almost every weekend with all the people you love and frying everything and drinking beer and telling jokes and making friends and connections, but also getting really heavy. And mixed with that, I had an identity of being a football player, so I I really felt right being a big guy. And um, just those things mixed together in that lifestyle and that culture and in that identity. Um, By the time I was 32 or so, I found myself about 420 pounds. Right. How old were you then? About 32. 32, yeah. yeah. And and talk to me a little bit more about the culture. The culture fascinates Man, it's good. Me. Some of the best people you ever meet in your life. Um, and we and you know what we do. What we do is, it's almost like this. Uh, this is a fancy phrase. It's not my phrase. It's Howard's phrase. But it's a toxic imitation of respecting like our ancestry, because what they really were doing with the foods that we really sort of overeat today, Mm -hmm. those things were founded in times of scarcity as like a survival tool, you know, how to eat every single piece of the pig in a boucherie or whatever, or get crawfish out of the swamp. And that culture, what we do today is we sort of overindulge in those things that were really just helping us get through times of scarcity. And the bulk of those old Cajun meals were a lot of like vegetables, you know, backyard garden vegetables and things like that. But we kind of have gotten off of the rails and are just sort of wallowing in this toxic imitation of honoring our ancestry by killing ourselves with these survival techniques they use to make it through times of real difficult scarcity, you know? Well, I would suggest it's even more complicated than that Mm -hmm. because it's so intertwined with, I mean, those traditions are so intertwined with family and love. It's very emotional. Yeah. And so they symbolize more than just fill in the belly, right? This is is about, you know, honoring, you know, honoring these traditions that have been going on for generations and generations Mm -hmm. where you come from to break ranks with that is more than just, Hey, I want to slim down. It's Mm -hmm. a, it's a rejection of a lifestyle. It's a a slap in the face to my mom. It's a slap in the face to your uncle. So-and-so who fries the best fish or fries the best gratons. What you mean? You don't want that. Uh huh. And like get literally pissed off at you. Yeah. So that's difficult. You know? So growing up playing football, hunting, fishing, Mm -hmm. Drinking, drinking for me. 420, 420 pounds. pounds. When the football went away, uh-huh. it really ballooned. What I, were you? What were you when you were at your fighting weight playing ball? Playing ball, I was like two ninety to three thirty uh-huh. in that range. You still had a hundred to go. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I got it done. Though. Yeah, and, and t- tell me a little bit about what it's like to to, to carry that kind of weight around. It's it's a job, man. It's a full time job. I didn't. I don't. You know. You don't think about it at the time. That that whole you know boil frog kind of a thing. You don't realize it because it happens so slowly. Mm-hmm. But um, it's just tiring. Your feet are always hurting. Your ankles are always hurting. You're always just trying to. You're on your feet, but you are immediately need to get to another place to sit down. That's a lot of 
work. It's, it's, you know, the funny things like, like in the first, uh, conversation we had about being on an airplane and needing an extension or then moving me to the front of the plane, that stuff is embarrassing. Yeah. But, um, but not only that, just the physical pain and then the physical things that think about just the way I think about this because I'm dealing with my back over the past year or so. The way my spine would have to contort when I have this big giant belly and I'm bending over to tie my shoes or put on my my um you know socks and what how that mashes against my lumbar spine. I I spend so much time thinking about what I've done to my body. Mm-hmm. Um but it regardless of what I've done to it, today feels a hell of a lot different than it felt back then being mashed down to the earth with right. an extra 200 pounds on my body. I can't imagine. I throw on a 20-pound weighted vest right now to go do some training hikes, and I can't imagine having 200, <laughs> 200 pound weight right, I would vest. Not, I'm right? not going far, yeah. I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. And what about emotionally? Um. It's like night and day in my life, honestly. Um, you know, I got bitter. I was angry a lot, sort of mad at myself, but really projecting that anger mm-hmm. um, in situations on other people. Like, oh, no wonder things are messed. Look at all it, what is wrong. And, um, you know. Now, I still have a lot of those pressures, a lot of those stressors in my life, that stuff going on, but I feel lighter, not only physically, but in my inside of my mind, inside my heart. And um, I handle those things in a completely different way. I cry a lot more than, yeah. you know, like... You cry all okay, the time. But dude. I'm okay with yeah. it. Like, my Bam Bam cried a lot. He was a tough bastard. Um, so, but it's okay to wear your heart on your sleeve, you know? And that has helped. Like it, it's it's cleansing, mm-hmm. um, and that has helped me. I think release a lot of physical weight as well. Really, sort of adopting that mindset and and listening to my first rich roll podcast is where I started to turn the rudder that in that direction. You know that you you were where I was learning these things, right? Yeah, you first, uh, I mean, I've told this story a million times, but for people that are new, you first came across my radar when you tweeted, you tagged me in a tweet that had a before and an after picture. And I, I just I just couldn't believe it was the same guy, this enormous, you know, 400 plus pound It was pound me, dude. and I couldn't believe it was the same guy. <laughs> and then like another picture of a guy who looked like Bradley Cooper. And I'm like, this can't be I didn't real. even know who Bradley and Cooper this is was. Like, <laughs> this is like... Uh, Early days of the podcast, yeah. I was still doing Skype interviews, and 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 that was all I knew. Of, and you, I think you had written like a manifesto yeah, right, yeah, on your blog, yeah, and, yeah. You, and I was I was touched by that. And that's all I knew about you. And I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a flyer and get this guy on the show. And then you came up. We did a Skype call, and I just could not believe your story. And that and that testimony, you you know, you trusting me to kind of you know share your experience touched a lot of people. And I said to you in the wake of that, you've got to find a way to like share your story. Of course. You know, you, you, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what your career situation is <laughs> yeah. or what's going on down there, but I'm telling you, man, people need to hear your story. Yeah. It's super powerful. Um, so do whatever you need to do to get yourself out there. And, and, and not only have you like taken that and run with it, like it's just amazing now to look back and, and see I mean, you had made so much progress up to that point, but after that, you've gone on. And I mean, at that point, I think you'd run a half marathon. You hadn't even yeah, run a marathon yeah, yet. You've I, run, yeah. I don't know how many marathons, a lot of marathons. I've done, I, don't, I, I don't know. You've how run many. ultra marathons. You right. won an ultra marathon. Yeah. And now you're sitting across from me because you were attending the plantrician, you know, the plantrician conference, the big plant-based nutrition conference that's held every year. You're, you're getting up on stages, you're sharing your story, mm-hmm. you're writing a book right now. It's yeah. like, it's so inspiring to see that, that, uh, see the impact that you're making, man. And I think it's just starting. And well, it's just about, and, and I, honestly, I learned it from you. I learned it from like, like, um, you know, that, uh, 
a bunch of the podcasts. I'm drawing a blank on the guy's name right now. I hate it. It's what it was. I've, I've texted you before. It's one of my very the the champion blue, the blueprint champion. Remember that? Podcast? Oh, uh, Jeff Spencer. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And so that like things like that was like nuggets where it's like, oh, it's not about this race specifically. It's a bigger thing. It's about something greater. It's about being part acting in a way that you sort of organically collect a team around you that helps you get something great, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, I was seeing you do that. You, you were doing that. You were accumulating that in an organic way. And that's all I've done is like, Hey, this is something I can do. This is something that feels good. I like talking to people. I like running. It's fun. We have, we're building a community. I'm helping te- helping friends that I know avoid heart disease, lose some weight, this is awesome. It's right in the vein of my happiness. And you just start brunt chasing that and it grows and serendipity happens along the way. And like these amazing things, but you go to a place like plantrition, the, the plantrition project. And it's a, it's a thousand doctors who most of them are already plant-based, but some of them maybe are there because they're plant curious and they're looking, they just heard some science that's got them. But To be standing there as like a C student from Chag Bay, Louisiana, worried about and being able to talk to a doctor about what we're doing, you know, and have that person come up to me and want to take my picture because they know me from the Ritual Uh podcast is a hell of an icebreaker. You Uh know what I mean? That is a huge, um, like validation to me that I don't know if you know that you gave me that just. It, it feels good to be able to use that in a way that is helping other people, you know? Well, you are helping a lot of people. And I, I think when I look back on, on how you kind of went from, from that place to where you're, you're at now, um, you know, I'm sure people come up to you and say, like, how did you do that? How are you in this place where you get to, you know, give talks and the like? You just showed up and said yes to the next thing. It's mm-hmm. not like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wipe this. There was no this. strategy. This is, this yeah. is like, this <laughs> is <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> it's not like training for a marathon where you're like, okay, here's the date and here are the workouts I have to put in. It's more like surfing. Yeah. You got to like ride this wave, and when you're present, and you're paying attention, and and you've done enough mm-hmm. interior work to be able to trust your instincts. You know what the right next move is. Mm-hmm. You do that. And you be open to the possibility that that will guide you or lead you to the next thing. Mm-hmm. And they're tiny little steps that seem like they mean nothing in the moment. Or, yeah, I'm going to go down to the community center and talk to whatever. But you don't know what's going to come of that. You don't know who's there, who's going to talk to somebody else that will lead to some other thing. And I think the, the – and this has been my experience as well. Like people are like, how are you – like how did you go to Nantucket? Pro? How are you doing? It's like I just showed up, man. I said yes a lot. You know, that's it. I was, I opened my heart and, and you tried, told me tried to serve. Early. And, yeah. and then I, I really feel like I've been guided. It was not a, it was not a plan mm-hmm. that I laid forth in front of me. Like, this is where I want to be. It was about saying yes and, and learning how to surf that wave. Um, and that means saying no to other stuff too. Like what's, what's moving you forward, what's not. But you've done that in such a beautiful way. But I think of all the things that you've done or that you're involved with. It's really cool to, you know, look, look, the weight loss story is like the way in because that's so dramatic. And, mm-hmm. you know, obviously that's what everyone wants to know about with you. And then you look at the the races that you've done, ultra marathons, like all this crazy stuff is super inspiring. But to me, the most inspiring thing that you do is how you give back to uh, to your community and the love that you have for your neighborhood, essentially. And I think that is what is most needed and lacking right now, not just in the health and fitness, nutrition, Mm -hmm. plant-based movement, but in society at large. Like we need, that was a big theme of the Nantucket Project this past weekend, Mm -hmm. like neighborhoods, community. Mm -hmm. How can we learn to um, better and more effectively communicate with our fellows? And that's something that you're succeeding at in the way that you're serving people back home. So can you talk a little bit about that? I just want to have a conversation with with people at home. That's my audience. That's who I talk to. That's that's where I'm, that's where I'm facing everything I ever post on social media. Um, 
um, because they're closest to my heart. They're closest to me geographically. I've been people that I don't even know their name. Maybe I've seen them five times in my life, but I've seen that person five times in my life at Walmart because we're both from Thibodeau. Mm-hmm. Like, and so that matters. That's that's where you speak the language. That's where you can have the most impact. Um, and these are the people that not only need it the most, but are, um, you know, the people that that are sort of forgotten. Yeah, it's like, absolutely. I could go do some talk in Brentwood. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, not gonna, but it's like, they're already hip to it or whatever. I'm in my silo. You yeah, know, people but in my people, trail park are not about to go to plant yeah, stock. They're not going, you know? they're not going to the veg mm-hmm. fest, you right. know? So you're able to communicate with these people in a way that almost nobody else can. Mm-hmm. And so what is that? Like, how do you do that? And what is that about? I just use the same language that I would talk about deer hunting or fishing or anything else with, but we just have that same rapport over this stuff I've learned about food and this stuff I've learned about running. And hey, you should try it a little bit. And luckily, our local hospital has built this giant wellness center in Thibodeau. So it's kind of like the end thing to do to be active. So I have conversations in the locker room. With How the did that guys. become the in thing to do? Because they spent seventy million dollars mm-hmm. on a gigantic wellness center that is is the la di da now in Thibodeau, man. That's where uh-huh. everybody, so everybody, everybody wants to go hang out there. Yeah, everybody's really? there, yeah. <laughs> Most of them are just sitting around, you know, shooting the shit, hanging right. out, talking at the bench. Um, you know, not really doing a whole lot, not breaking a whole lot of sweat, but they're there, and it's and it's alive in the. In the, uh, you know, in the community, like there's at least a movement towards let's moving some. Now they still serve mm-hmm. crazy stuff in the cafe and all, but I get to talk about that to them through my social media, you know, without necessarily directly railing against people and try. I don't I try not to make myself, you know, unwanted, but it's difficult sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and exactly crafting like how to talk to the people on the body about a plant-based diet and about disease reversal without and them listening to me is like not, I'm just the trailer park guy from Chag Bay. Why should I listen to you? My cardiologist says you don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to go with him. Right. So but being able to come and let the people at, that are back home see me do what I'm doing right now. See me go to see me on social media, go to other places and go, oh. Yeah, he might just be from Chag Bay, but people all over want to hear from him. So maybe even though he sounds like us, he walks like us, he talks like us, maybe he does know what he's talking about. Just because he's from Chag Bay, maybe, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean he's a total dumbass. (laughs) 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 But what if someone doesn't know you from social media? Like, what's the opener? Like, you you go into a group of people, maybe it's a community gathering, you got people that are obese or, you know, have diabetes, type 2 diabetes, they're, you know, spent their entire life eating poor boys and, you know, Mm -hmm. doing what you do and fishing and hunting, coming from a completely different perspective from, uh, you know, the kind of kale chomping, you know, vegan that lives on the west side of Los Angeles. Sure. I just tell them, you know, if you think about our grandparents, if you think it's a lot of garden vegetables, that's a big part of of being a Cajun is having a garden and having those garden vegetables like on the regular, like a lot of it. Um, I let's steer towards potatoes. I'm not asking you to stop being a hunter. I'm not asking you to stop fishing. I'm asking you to pay attention for just a second about something that I learned about these heart attacks that we go to funerals for all the time. And there's, there's a, now, whether or not you want to do anything about it, once you learn this, that's on you, pimp. You do you. But for right now, let me show you this. And um, here's how we can get it done. And you can still have your cake and eat it, too. You can still go fishing if you want. You still go hunting if you want. But let's do let's get rid of dairy. Let's get rid. So the, to understand where my friends are at the moment and be willing to talk to them where, from that place without trying to shatter their whole world, Mm -hmm. right? And have a conversation about their health and about what that means to their family pod that means a lot to them, you know? So that's where we have the conversation. That's where I have the conversations with the guys about how to get traction or how to even get desire to have traction in this behavior change. 
Yeah, it's one thing if you're you're staring down the barrel of like a crazy health crisis, like your doctor is telling you you're going to have a heart attack any day now, mm-hmm. or you're going to get your foot amputated or something like that. Like that will <laughs> inspire and motivate somebody to make a change. But but what if you're just you know you're walking around with fifty extra pounds on you and you yeah. don't look any different than anyone else yeah. and you feel okay? Well, like probably, how do you get through to somebody like that who's like, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Like what you've done is inspiring. Like I I should probably eat better or do something different. But like how do I even begin to do that? Well, that's the thing. If that's where for me that's the health com- the health part of it is because it doesn't matter. I know there are people that are completely slim that have six-pack abs that drop dead of heart attacks because you, there's ways to physically manipulate the amount of adipose tissue you have on your, your body that does not necessarily translate to healthy endothelial. And this is, that is like from just a dude that went to Chack Bay Elementary. I just read a couple of books and listened to Dr. Esselstyn on a documentary. You don't have to like become a scientist to understand that and see that. So you can be only 50 pounds overweight. You can be proud of me for having lost 230 pounds. You can feel like you don't really need to do anything because you're not 230 pounds overweight. However, if you're eating the standard American diet, you are going to be um, on the road to like at least being on the bevy of cardiac medications that that's that based that you go in for the first thing and you get on all of those things. You know, uh-huh. the first cardiac thing you you get on all of those meds. You're at least going to have that. If not, you know, what is it? Twenty five percent of the time, the the first sign of uh, cardiovascular disease is a sudden death. Right. That's that's a big number to me. I don't want to play that game, especially since I know that my family, especially all the men in my family, seem to die of heart attacks. So I'm going to do it different. And I'm I'm armed with some information they were not armed with. Seems irresponsible of me to like if if me and Bam Bam, if I was following him in a boat and he ran across a sandbar. And he hit the sandbar, and then I followed him right into the sandbar and hit the same damn sandbar. <laughs> Bro, I'd be in trouble, you know. Pay attention, <clears throat> and that's all that. That's what I would tell that person. It ain't about your belly. I'm gonna. I don't care if you lose the fifty pounds or not. You do you. But this is about something bigger. This is about why we lead the nation in heart disease. This is about why we lead the yeah. nation in obesity and diabetes and all of these things. One of the things that 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 is pretty remarkable about <clears throat> what you've done is that you you did it in this community really without any support, at least not any support oh, in uh, terms of boots yeah. on the ground. Sure, no Whole Foods nearby, no, no immersion program mm-hmm. down the street. Uh, you know, something inside of you just just clicked and you made it happen essentially on mm-hmm. your own. And I think that's probably a big part of what compels you to try to create, you know, programs in, in your area so that the next person doesn't have to do it alone. Uh, but one of the biggest things that you hear about the plant-based lifestyle is, I, you know, I can't afford that food. You know, mm. like I, I'm, on, you know, I, I'm on a budget here. Uh, that's great yeah. for you, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, it's not going to work. It's not going to yeah. work for me. So as somebody who lives, you know, where in, a, in an area where most people do their shopping at Walmart, mm-hmm. Like, what do you say to those folks? You're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. If it's expensive, you're buying the wrong shit at the store. Sorry. You, I'm not, that's what you, we need to adjust what you're buying. You stay in the produce department. And you need to buy rice. You need to buy beans. You need to buy potatoes. You need to get the, you know, that's, that's the bulk of our food. It is expensive to buy processed stuff. It is expensive to buy pre-made meals. It is expensive. I agree with you on that. But that's not where we should be eating. We should be eating these things that we can buy 10 pounds of it at a time and we'll be fine. It's traditionally pauper food. Right. It is exactly what it is. And so, and I love the quote that I heard from Dr. Esselstyn in one of his talks one time is there's a certain dignity in simplicity. And when you stay in the produce department and you walk out with, you know, a 10 pound bag of potatoes, some bell peppers, a few, you know, a few onions, a couple of avocados and a bag of kale and some maybe a thing full of almonds or some walnuts. Like I'm ready to go home and, you know, make some food. That's all you need. That's it. And that's not. 
that's not expensive, you know? Um, so that's what I tell people all the time when they, it's like, if, oh man, it's just so expensive. And then, no, you're really doing it wrong if it is expensive because the bulky, bulky calories should be coming from like really cheap food, really, really cheap food. Um, you're in, you, you're coming off an injury, right? Oh yes. This yeah, is, so you got yeah. a rough year. Very man. Yeah. So it, what was the last race that you did? Liverpool in May of 2017. Uh-huh. Uh, that was like, I've done races since then, but that was the last one. Like I was trained for and raced it. I've done a 50 K since then. Um, and at, in, at Mount Chiha, uh-huh. uh, and I think it was February in this year, but I was injured doing it. <laughs> like, yeah. and I was like, ah, I'm just going to get in be before right. the cutoff. I'll be fine. Just take all day to do so it. So what happened? Like, what's the injury? And the injury you've been is, on kind of a long road back. Yeah, man. It's a, it's something that's been there since football. Like, I've always had this. It's the reason that I stopped playing ball in the first place and got really fat. Um, was I have this disc between L4 and L5 in my back that that's a severe protrusion. We know now because I've had an MRI done since, like, um, in the past six months or so. And there's a severe protrusion and some some canal stenosis there, and so that's there. That's that's the thing, right? And not only did had I made it worse from years of you know playing football and being morbidly obese for decades afterwards that uh, afterwards, but then my hobby that I pick up once I lose the weight and everything is ultra marathon. Right. And, and not only ultra marathon, but running really fast too on top of that. And, um, I really, after my hundred mile race would, I've spent so much time thinking about how I hurt myself. Right. But after my hundred mile race, I got into training for Liverpool because runners world was sending me to Liverpool mm-hmm. after the thing. And so, I wanted to do that Boston training. I wanted to get, I knew it was going to take me a long get time fast. to get faster. Yeah. So I wanted to hurry up and start running. And I started training probably three weeks after my hundred miler. Um, not enough for time. Boston, to not rest. enough time. Yeah. And it just got worse and worse. And the closer I got to the race, the more I was ignoring my back pain. And BJ knew she was like, but she knew what I was doing. She knew that I was just trying to make it through Liverpool, you know, but it was rough. And I'm, mm. and I was like, I can, I can grit it out. I know I'm in good shape. I've been working really hard. And man, between the plane ride, because we flew, we flew over there on Thursday, late Thursday. I raced on Sunday, and I flew home Monday. Uh huh. <laughs> from Liverpool. And uh, and 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 so, what happened? I mean, now and, since yeah. then, and like, so is after your the back seized up yeah, on you. You can't. I was like crippled man for months just couldn't my back was on fire i couldn't sleep so i wasn't healing it was just one and then i was trying to get back to running every time i would make a little bit of progress i was trying to hurry up and get back to running because i had hired you just never took enough time off yeah so i made all of 2017 was like it was i kept re-injuring myself i know now i kept i kept going back too early I kept going back too early and running too fast and then getting in the hills and trying to do vert and trying to get ready for a mountain hundred miler. And so it kept knocking me back down. And at the same time, I'm still going through a bunch of emotional stuff because I'm fighting through all of it because the pain is bad Mm. when it hurts me. It's bad. Like it's, it's really bad. So where are you at now? Right now I am. Yoga has been a life changer. I've been doing yoga at least three, four times a week Uh for a few months now. That has been monumental. Um, I'm feeling amazing. My mileage is back up. This is about my sixth or eighth 35-plus mile week. I'm starting to run hard again. Um, But, yeah, I still have some pressure back there, and I feel something going on, but I'm trying to live with it. What do I need to do in my in my power to not have surgery. What, what does that mean for me? Do I need to run faster? Do I need to run slower? Do I need to run shorter? What, 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 is, what is it that I need to adjust in my life to be able to 
keep doing my thing without making that blow up because that is diff- that's a difficult thing to get through, man. Yeah, it's a different kind of discipline. I see why people give up and go get surgery. Like, yeah. I mean, not that people, not that it's giving up. But my mom, the reason I'm so averse to surgery is my mom has an 18-inch steel rod in her back from severe scoliosis. Mm -hmm. And I watched her suffer with the, like, after effects of back surgery her whole life. And she railed against it. And when they they suggested it in football, she was like, nope, you just don't play football anymore. Mm -hmm. And, um, And so it's been, that's not an option unless it's, it has to be. I'm, yeah, I'm, and there's know. I don't know when she had her surgery, but I'm sure there's been I'm sure yeah you know, I'm sure some, I'm sure some much significant better. advances. I'm sure it's much and, better, yeah. but I've always been like hesitant of of it at all for that for just yeah, because I've seen it. Yeah, you always want to be the last the last option. So, but it's really it's not it's not pretty. It's a bad. It's a, you know from everybody who's looked at it, it's like um, you know it should be operated on yesterday. Uh huh. And do you do any kind of Cairo, like uh, yes, you know, I have hanging upside am- down and the decompression and all that. Kind I of have stuff. an amazing. I found a guy in down the bayou a little bit from Thibodeau, uh, actually a high school buddy of my running friend, my really good buddy JT that runs with me all the time. And um, man, it has been. He does it different. Like so, all of the I would normally go and I just get just get cracked from head to toe break all crack all my bones uh-huh. and he does it different where he's, he's like he just finds the most out of alignment thing or the most he calls it a primary and he'll just do that one adjustment and then we'll come back in 48 hours or so and see see what's next mm-hmm. and that approach mixed with my yoga and and having a coach help me stay calm and stop going so damn hard so early Hey, I didn't get faster until I slowed down. So you really should slow down. Chill out, man. Relax. Yeah. So I had someone who I trusted telling me that. So those things combined, I'm in a much better place right now. So much so I'm feeling like feeling like actually racing again. You know. Um, so I have some stuff on the on the horizon that I'm looking forward to oh, yeah. training You're for. You're smiling. Yeah. Like, yeah, you picked, have you picked a race? Yeah. Well, I have a 50k. I've already signed up for, uh-huh. in, but it's in February. But I'm going to go back to the first one I ever did, that one in Destin. I did right. one in Destin on the beach. That was the one we talked about yeah. in 2015. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But me and my buddies who did that race, we're going to go back to it. Now, they've been knocking out 100 miles like crazy since uh-huh. then. I've only done one, you know, <laughs> and they're just smashing them. And uh-huh. one of them's done a tour of duty since then. And Teacher like, becomes a student. It's like, oh, yeah. People are like, oh man, I can't believe you run ultras. I'm like, man, I am the weakest ultra runner of all of my friends. <laughs> you know? Who would have thought that? Yeah, man. it's like I am nothing. The guy like led the charge. Well, it's I'm glad to hear about the Cairo working. You know, people give Cairo shit, but like it's it's done a lot for me. Yeah, um, it's been super beneficial. You know, I have some lower back pain stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm spondy and you know like some curved spine, so I have to stay on top of that. And one of the things that 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 my guy had me start doing, which I definitely need to do more consistently than I do is something called the foundation series. You heard about this? Like no, if you look no. it up on YouTube, it's a series. It's like a 10 minute little routine that you can do every single day of like super simple, just static, you know, postures that yeah. really help with alignment. That, that sounds interesting. Cause I find myself like doing things intuitively. It would be nice to maybe have some, di- like some specific direction. Yeah. Uh, Cause I can feel like when I'm driving, I can feel that, but I can feel my pelvis getting looser and like uh-huh. my sacrum. Cause I went to this guy in New York when I was on, it was so crazy how the universe works. This, I went um, to the Good Morning America show. Right. And I wanted while, to get into that with you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wild. But anyway, while I was up there, Howard has a friend who put me in touch with another friend who mm-hmm. had another friend. And then, like three friends later, I'm in touch with this like body worker fella in in um in manhattan Mm -hmm. and so i was like i was in touch with him via text message and i said i'm gonna come he said this is right on my side of the street i see why my friends sent you here this is right up my alley i I can help you and so i went to him and he 
kind of showed me what my problem was. That was a big issue was I didn't really understand where the pain was coming from. I knew I had the bulging disc, but that's, I had pain all in my, like in my groin and in the yeah. hip part of me and all. And so he did a lot of explaining and he gave me some exercises to do to get, to wake up my hip muscles and all. Cause a lot of stuff I'm sure is frozen from not only running so much, but also being so fat for so long. I'm sure my pelvis is a weird yeah. shape sometimes. I don't know. But um, he showed me how to get started moving my body. And that was the first step. It started changing. And it made me go, you know what? I should do yoga. It made the, the movements he did felt like yoga movements. I was like, okay. Instead of having to go to Manhattan and see him every, <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, I'll just start doing yoga and see if it helps. And it has been, it's been like mm. magnificent. Yeah, just really open up the, the hips and the psoas and, and create that space. Yeah. You know, it's like it's about like loosening it up so there's more space. And the breathing, there. like, because I think the lungs, like when you, from the inside, what it does to your spine as you physic as your body physically heaves and, you know, makes breath, you know, because mm. um, there's something that happens when I'm breathing. You know, the cat cow stuff, I always hear things moving when right. I'm doing cat cow. Um, well, it, ta- it takes a certain level of discipline to, to know that you actually have to back off. And, and you've been really good about that. Like even, and you know, like on Strava, you still like post all your stuff, but it'll yeah. just be like, I went on a walk, yeah. you know? And it's like, I've been that's, doing cool. that on that's purpose. where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's okay. Um, and you know, I think for, for people that get into running and then become obsessed with running and it's one race after another, you feel like you're, you're, you know, a superhuman. And you think you're never going to hit that that yeah. injury, but uh, you, and especially just, when you become plant based, yeah. you're like, "Oh, plants got me! I can do whatever right. I want." Yeah, man. it's not going to it's I not going to prevent your knee from oh, blowing out, yeah. you know, I mean, whatever. So to everything, um, yeah, you've had to learn that lesson the hard way yeah. from trying to go back too soon, which I think is a, a really common yeah. thing. Like, oh, I feel all right. Like I'm going to go hit it again, and then you letting just them, never heal. Yeah, letting like obligation, letting a race obligation sort of uh, push me ahead. Like before I was ready, you right. know, cause I know I had a race on the, I had a race on the horizon. That's why I kept going, try to, cause like, man, I don't have to, and there's a mountain hundred miler that I wanted to do in September. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like, man, I don't have enough time to get it. If I, if I take two more weeks, I'm not going to be able to build right. my base. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so two of the two of the kind of huge media events that occurred in your life since the last time we spoke is, uh, and you mentioned it. Um, you landed the cover of Runner's World magazine, which was crazy, right? Yeah. And then, unrelated to that, really, you ended up on Good Morning America because of this face- Facebook group that my, you created. My dogs. Yeah. I my boys. So start with the Runner's World thing. Yeah, that was crazy. Some like just a bunch of people on social media um, just kept like tagging me in this thing that um this promotion that runners row was doing like a cover photo contest and it wound up being a and it was a a bunch of before and afters is what Uh it wound up being but it wasn't that wasn't the theme of the deal but anyway it was just about your running story and so i was like okay i'll do that and i put my running story in there about my specifically with you know the crescent city classic and Mm -hmm. you know that yeah explain why that race is so because okay so in the in the very beginning um the first race i ever did was the 10k the crescent city classic in new orleans and it took me like an hour and 43 minutes and that race that that distance became like a like sort of like a indication of something to me like i it showed you, progress you, you took that on like before yeah. what you were still in your journey of losing weight sure that was a part the of first like, one keeping you i engaged. had lost some weight but uh the first one i still weighed like 330 340 something like that in the first one and that's why it took me an hour and 40 minutes right. to do a 10k and then the next year uh you know i so my my story the next year i, I wanted to do under an hour and I got that done. And that sort of set me off into trying to like be a better runner, which sent me to you and all this other stuff. And then the next and then the next year I wanted to get a poster for the first time. And and um this race, if you there's thirty thousand entrants. So if you get a top five hundred finish, 
you get a special commemorative poster and uh-huh. it's like a big fucking deal in New right. Orleans. Like if you were a runner and you New Orleans, like you got a poster this year. That's the thing. Like we want to know if, like right. where are you? Oh, you oh, you're not a post you didn't get a poster? Okay. Like uh-huh. so that's right. the thing. See you next year. Right. And so <laughs> And it kind of, I was like starting to get into running circles, right? And starting to understand that. And I was like, I want a poster, damn it. And I got a poster. Uh-huh. And that how, in many, my third how many year, attempts? Third, three attempts? That was to my get third. There? Yeah. Right. I had no idea about a poster until I was training to break 50 minutes in the third one. That's what I was really wanting to do. And the third one was to break 50 minutes. But what wound up happening is uh, I broke. Like forty, I ran forty six and change in a training run, and then the people that I ran that with said, "Dude, you should probably try to get a poster this year." Yeah. And then he's like, "If you could run sub forty five, you could probably get a poster." So that third year, I ran forty three oh eight. Wow. So it was like an hour in three years. That yeah. was like, oh, Dropped that was a whole cool. hour. <laughs> I mean, it was low hanging fruit. <laughs> yeah, man. that was still, just a low bar. That ain't, you know? that ain't nothing, man. Yeah, and then so, but since then, I, I broke forty minutes for the first time. Mm-hmm. Howard came down, and he he wanted a poster. He's like, I think I can run fast enough to get a poster, and and he did. He he got yeah, a poster, too. man. He got a top five hundred finish. He got one with. It was hot that year. A lot of people fell off, and he wound up uh, finishing forty. Like forty five fifteen uh-huh. and getting a poster. I broke. I got thirty. I ran thirty nine fifty five, um, and that's still my ten k PR. That's your PR. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, in t- in the context of like this runner's world story, yeah. that, that so I just kind of shared important. that. Yeah, yeah, shared that sort of continuum about my running in, in a, a more abbreviated version, obviously, for the, to fit the contest rules. And I showed a, and I shared a before picture of me, and asked my friends on social media to vote for me. And um, and I didn't see the vote totals getting up really high, so I didn't right. think anything would ever happen. But it turns out the votes were just like a s- tiny part of what they were really, how they were really going to choose the thing, you know. So they had Bart Yasso and the the Chet, uh, um, the editor in chief of Runner's World, mm-hmm. and um, Mr. Jim Weber, the the CEO of of um, Brooks. Uh-huh. And they just sort of really kind of went through all of the stories and picked the top 10 and brought all 10 so of all us you up. Guys to New York, yeah, and right? we hung, I'm still friends with all of them. We, you guys go running and yeah, they did like a photo shoot with yeah. you and all kinds and then, of stuff. And then after that, they were like, okay, so then it was like the final thing. And then they picked who the girl winner was and the guy winner was. Yeah. And, um, and I won. And I was, I was like, I was beside myself. I couldn't imagine. What is that like? To go, you know, to a newsstand or, or you know, to see that magazine on, a, you know, sitting around somewhere. It's funny. Like, I don't because I can't even compute. Yeah. Okay. I, it's a runner's world and I'm on the cover. I mean, I it almost doesn't even seem like real. It's um, it's powerful. I feel proud of myself in ways I've never felt proud of myself before in my entire life. And it's almost like an emblem. It's almost like a look. Like, you didn't just lose weight. You did this. Mm -hmm. But what I get from you is it's not a, hey, look at me. No, it's it's not. It's a symbol of, like, all this journey, like, all the work that you put in to completely transform yourself from this, you know, person that you were into this person that you are today. It's It's like a totem, right? It's just, it represents that shift Mm -hmm. you know it's not like hey how many people read the magazine it's Mm -hmm. like it's like uh it's just a an acknowledgement and that's what that's exactly right it's being like people going being acknowledged for something that people think i did that has value right to 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 others which that's that's like you know that's powerful to feel like you're valuable to someone or valuable to lots of people Mm -hmm. just because of what you've been through. Um, Do you find that, that the flip side of that is that now suddenly people who like a big part of your whole thing is like, uh you're very relatable. Like people can connect (laughs) with you because you're like a dude. Right. Right. But 
suddenly you're on the cover of a magazine, yeah. now maybe not so relatable. You know, yeah. like, oh, well, Josh did that, but like, look, he's on the cover of magazines. He's all fancy pants now. You know, it's yeah. like, that's not my life. Yeah. I know it's tricky, but it's, if once people, I guess, meet me, they, they'll, they'll, uh, uh-huh. they can understand. That's why I try to stay so raw and on my social media. I really don't like, cause that way people do understand that I'm not yeah. any, I'm just a normal person. Right. You know, you'd go on a rant <laughs> at like four in the morning in your truck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, uh, I'm just a normal dude. Uh, there's nothing really special about me. Like results are typical if you apply, you know, the power of plants to your life and the power of bipedal locomotion and getting outside and getting some sunshine and using this human body the way it was intended to be used and love somebody, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's pretty simple and to be really damn happy. And so shame is such a secret. <laughs> All right, Josh, like I, I get it. I'm inspired. But like, does it have to be like the plant based thing? Like I'm hearing a lot of good stuff about this low carb diet. Sure. Like maybe I'm going to go keto. Like what's the deal with the plants? Like, why is that the trip for well, you? The thing is, I think you would agree that nutrients are very important in our diet. And there's no more nutrient dense way to eat than a heavily plant based diet. So we don't let's not even call it plants. Let's just say we're going to eat a nutrient-rich diet that's high in fiber and very calorically dilute because we're trying to lose weight right now. Now, if you can do that with some hamburger meat, show me. Show me how we do that. But we need these things to do the thing you say you want. So if you say you want that, this is what we have to do. If you do otherwise, then you're not choosing the thing you say you want. So you got some work to do. You're lying to yourself a little bit. And I don't know how to help you. I can only show you some, some, you know, some data and tell you what I did and help you through the thing. But ultimately, it's up to you to use your plate as a volume knob on potential disease or current disease. It's up mm-hmm. to you. Mm-hmm. you know? How has your approach to your diet evolved since the first time that we talked? Like, what have you learned? How has it changed? How have you dialed it in? Got, it's gotten really simple. It's gotten a lot simpler since then. Less, um, I do lots more savory for breakfast than I used to. I used to do lots of um, oats and fruit and things like that. Uh, not that that's bad. It's just I've, I, it's not my thing. I, I'd much rather a good warm bowl of real soupy white beans over some kale. Uh-huh. You know, a big giant ass bowl of that after a long run in the morning, after a good eight, nine mile, six, eight mile run in the morning. Um, that is where that's what I want after my run. So, you know, getting simpler, having savory pretty much all the time. I don't really I don't do a whole lot of sweet. I do. Mm-hmm. I do like apples for snacks and things like that. But when it comes down to sitting down and eating a meal, it's almost every single meal is going to be something hot and savory. Um, and that's simple. Just keep something in an Instapot and do different things with it as I eat it. And you do you cook all your meals? Pretty much yeah. during the week for sure. On the weekends when my wife and I and our puppies are in New Orleans, we go to our, our favorite, uh, you know, plant-based joints in, in the city. Um, but most of the time, yeah, we just cook our own stuff. We, we have an Instapot on the, on the oven, I mean, on the counter. And BJ, she makes amazing black beans. She does awesome red lentils with some Ethiopian spices in it and stuff. And we'll have, like, one of three things for the week. And on the, right. on and it just stays hot in the Instapot, you know. And she's uh, she she didn't originally she wasn't on on the same page as you from no, the, from the beginning, right? Yeah, so where um, is she at now? Oh, she's on. She's, she's all, on. She's oh yeah, on, she's on, on board. board. And what is that? What has that been like? It's amazing because she's on her own little world of of like sort of growing her own curiosity in different directions from mine. So like fasting and just different things and she's dabbling in that stuff and teaching me about it is you know so it's it's less about like being plant-based per se and more about like being being curious about where I would like to grow, what I would like to experiment with, you know? And that's as a couple 
like that's really fun to that's really fun to to engage in at what point did she kind of click into this though because at first it was just this is your trip right yeah yeah she um it she she still doesn't like to, she's not going to want to be on any of my social media posts. That's uh-huh. a 100% guarantee. That's, cl- that's clear. That's clear. I was, for, like there, people, was, there was I, a moment where I was like, is he still married? Yeah, like, no, yeah, you know no. what I mean? Like, oh, I, is everything okay at home? Oh, everything you is know? great. Man. All right, good. I'm it's, glad. And, and it's because she's not on my social media yeah. that everything is great. She she's not, she's not a fan of her because uh-huh. uh, of her before pictures for sure. Mm. So, but yeah, um, she she didn't see the need at first to get rid of like her she's like yeah get rid of meat that's gross <laughs> she's been after me like she would never i would take home deer meat and i would have to trick her into eating it making it heart-shaped patties or something so she would have to <laughs> i would guilt her into eating it and um uh, but when i got rid of the meat it wasn't that big of a deal for her um but the the dairy and stuff but yeah, watching folks over knives changed that for her, mm-hmm. and then she moved, she moved forward, and not only did she do it and go all in as a registered nurse, she saw the she saw the science, she understood it, it made really good sense to her, and like she says, once I knew it, I couldn't unknow it, you know, and so now she's an you know she's an employer herself, and and she's got thirty employees, lots of them are nurses and nurses aides and stuff, and so. Like her assistant is plant based. The the her her um her partner in the in the in the uh, business is plant based now. A older old, he's older than us. He's not old at all, um, but he's just an older guy. He's older than us, and he's like I didn't even know I had thirty pounds to lose. We bought him Eat to Live for Christmas one year. Yeah, and he's like. Oh my God, I'm off all of my mat. I'm off all of my statins. I lost 30 pounds. I didn't even know I had 30 pounds to lose. I feel like I'm going to live forever. It's like, so she's being infectious in her little community as well, like her little yeah. immediate environment. Yeah, and they got, yeah. she's got old people. It's so adorable. She'll, she's like, baby, I'm taking the Vitamix to work today. I got some Miss So and So, Miss, you know, Boudreaux wants a, a green smoothie. She wants me to show her how to make one, uh-huh. you know? So that's, that's, that's awesome, fun, man. man. Yeah, yeah, it's that's really, really cool. cool. So when people approach you and say, you know, I, I, I want to do this, but, you know, I have a partner that isn't on the same page or isn't, you know, isn't, uh, isn't supportive. I mean, as somebody who has had a little bit of an evolution in your own relationship yeah. with that, like, what is the kind of advice that you can give to that person? Just, you know, you got you to gotta exhibit consistency on your end. If you really want it to happen, you have to exhibit it. You have to do it and you have to be willing to accept that that person may never, ever do it. Mm-hmm. And um, and you're going to have to love them through that. And luckily, I didn't have to go past that step. Luckily, I didn't I'm, I don't have to figure out how to do it with someone in the house that isn't on the same page as me. Yeah. Luckily, um, BJ, you know was a pragmatist and saw the same thing I saw and jumped right on board with me. But I, I feel I get frustrated with, I hear a lot of the, the husbands who are, who are like, you know, women who are type two diabetics who this could like reverse that and fix it. But they got to go home and hear, I don't want to do all that vegan shit. You better cook me some steak and macaroni. Yeah. That's so dumb. That's not manly at all. You know, and to hear those stories from ladies we're trying to help is like, God dog it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough. It's weird. It's bizarre that our sense of, of what it means to be a man is 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 oddly tied up in what foods we choose to eat. Yeah. When you really think about it, it doesn't make any sense. But that's the fact. That's the truth. That's the way our culture functions. It is and it's what reinforced it is. with Constant advertising. Mm-hmm. I think it would, didn't you even post something the other day about like uh, somebody who was it? Was it you? Um, oh, maybe it was Nimai. He's like, I watched an NFL game. Like every ad, you know, was reinforcing this yeah, the, masculine stereotype mm-hmm. that you have to eat these certain foods or you're you're a fucking pussy. Yeah, you exactly. know what I mean. That's exactly right. And so that is not leading us in a positive direction in terms nope. of health. When you consider the fact that one out of every three people suffers a heart attack from heart disease. Yeah, and I mean, you know, 
Honestly, I, I don't know what the rates are in Thibodeau, but they're probably higher. Bad, yeah, is what we would say. I mean, give, can give me a typical like a snapshot of you know what it looks like down there in terms of. Okay, so just I'll just walk you through our locker room, like in the, in so in the wellness center we have, I would say just a rough guess, a good half, and I'm being generous here of all the guys that are going to the gym, and I love them. I'm not picking on them. But at least half of them are, would be technically morbidly obese. And I would say maybe more of them um, who are my age or older are on statins, you know. And some of them are having dialysis because they've had, they, I don't know what, what you've had so long that you wind up needing dialysis. But I have a buddy I talk to all the time who he's losing weight now, but it's because he is so diseased. So whether you go to Walmart or you go to Rouse's or people riding in buggies and people always talking about the next heart attack or the last heart attack or the cancer that they got or the that's ubiquitous, man. Disease is ubiquitous and and especially on the body so much. So it's a normal. It's a norm. Hmm. Um. And when it becomes normal, yeah. then, then there's then it just feels like there's no need to do any like if every if everybody's in your predicament mm-hmm. then there's no urgency to change yep yeah and but it's and the only way honestly that someone like me is will is willing to or able to go against the grain in that environment is because i know i got people that have my back that are really smart they might live in california mm-hmm. or they might live in north carolina but I'm not all alone. And me being able to have that confidence to stand in a place of vulnerability among the people I know where I speak the language in order to sort of win some some, um, you know, some sort of influence in having their ear for just a second. Right. Um, You know, that's that's powerful. Yeah. When you look at the kind of conversations that are happening online around health and diet and nutrition. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I don't know about you, but it's pretty toxic. A lot of people yelling at each other, throwing, you know, epithets at each other, you know, whether it's the, you know, vegans against the low carb people and the ketosis people and the intermittent Mm -hmm. fasting people. There's all these camps, right? Everybody's got the same goal. How can we improve health? Yeah. In America, across the world, we have different ideas about how to do that. But the level of communication that is taking place right now has devolved into this mudslinging affair whereby nobody is benefiting, nobody's listening to each other. And certainly the people who, who, who need the most help are not able to hear any of it. And yeah. I think that reinforces a paralysis. It keeps people stuck in their habits that are no longer serving them. And, uh, you know, a big, you know, big thing that I've been spending a lot of time thinking about is how to, how to transcend that, like how to have better communication, how to have better conversations, how to really understand where other people are coming from so that you can find an effective way mm-hmm. to have a conversation that perhaps could have a positive impact. And I think it starts with empathy. Mm-hmm. It starts with, um, you know, sort of uh, taking a beat, maybe letting go of whatever dogma you're holding on to mm-hmm. and why it's so emotionally charged for you. Yep. And just pausing to try to understand somebody else. And I see you as somebody who's been very effective at taking these tools that have transformed your life, that you've learned from people who live outside the bayou, coming home and finding a way to translate them into a way that can incite positive change in other people. So when you look at that dialogue, at that conversation that's either happening online or, or, or even you know in communities face-to-face with certain people, like, how do you think about that? What is your opinion on that? And how can we do better? I, I, well, by keep, I think if we just keep having the conversation, even when it's ugly, even when it's gross, even when it feels like mudslinging, whatever it is, let's be consistently talking about it. Let's keep pushing the, let's keep pushing the snowball up the hill. Um, but, you know, I think what lacks 
in a lot of all of the talk that I participate in myself and, and witness and read online is a, a lot of sincerity is what is missing. You know, I think if we approach with a lot more, uh, even if we're wrong in something, if we're truly sincere about um, trying to convey something of value to someone, uh, I think we are headed in the right direction. The reason is, I, I mean, I have words with people online. It does, yeah, you mix it up. I'm not saying that you're like, I, bro, because this is not playtime for me. This is I'm not selling Herbalife or something. Mm-hmm. This is not what we do in here, bro. This is not what we do in here. We're doing. So I am talking about something. I'm talking about grabbing a mach- grabbing a machete and going after something that I know now took my grandmother away at 67 years old, made my grandfather miserable for the last few years of his life. You know, um, I know that it's it's a it's it's a beast, and so I'm not playing. It's not a joke to me, and so I don't mind speaking out so i i don't think it should be unicorns and lollipops this this the context of this nutritional um whatever you want to call it this battle that's happening online sometimes um but i do think that it lacks a lot of sincerity i think a lot of people are faking the funk and mm-hmm. preaching at people before they even have a foothold on shit themselves mm-hmm. and that's where a lot of the noise comes from Mm-hmm. You know, but being frank and real with somebody is needed as long as it comes from a sincere place. And I don't mind apologizing if I was incorrect, uh, but I'm gonna, but I'm I'm going to try and speak my mind and try and try and stay to what I think and know is real in my world. And mm-hmm. if I'm wrong, tell me, I want to know if I'm wrong. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think you you accomplish that. I mean, you're unbelievably real and authentic in how you you know share your your unique experience and 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 what you've gone through and how you've gotten to where you're at right now. And one of the one of the kind of things that you've done that that really stood out to me was that time that you uh, that you took some pictures of you without your shirt on with all the um, extra skin yeah. hanging down. He's like, this yeah. is the truth of what happens when you yeah. go from four. 20 or whatever is. you and know down tr- to where you're at right now like you ain't, you're not gonna look like Nimai. right you know no, like, i'm not gonna be yeah, <laughs> every like, time I tell, dom's like i tell every time dom's post a shirt uh, like or or even garth they post a, a picture without a shirt on or something like put on a shirt man uh, i hate y'all killing me because <laughs> you're sitting across from me right now for people yeah. that are just listening to this you're you're jacked you got some yeah. guns on you yeah but i also have but you got well, like I have stretch marks yeah you know uh-huh. I have this these things. My body has gone through a lot. And even with all of this, even with all of this, it's not it's so much less worse than I imagined when I was 420 pounds. Because I was like, even imagine if I lost all the weight, how much extra skin I would have. Uh-huh. I remember getting my first stretch marks on my way to get fat. It ruined my whole summer. It ruined my 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 uh, my senior trip. We were in Cancun, and I took my shirt off, and I was about to go to the beach with all of my friends. And I passed by the mirror in the bathroom, and I saw stretch marks down my side, and I was haunt. What were you pushing then? Oh, and oh, I was probably three hundred pounds then. Right, but it was the stretch marks that got you. The stretch marks got me. Yeah. And and so I made up the fact that I was bored and I didn't I wasn't enjoying the trip and I played like a fuddy dud just to avoid going on the beach with my friends. Mm. It made everybody mad at me, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so this skin has been around for a long time, and I've also and 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 but so to like own that to own be it, like hey man, right, here's, just say, here's hey. what it looks like right, and then I also understand though the skin is an organ and it's alive. You know, and it's constantly adapting. So I'm in process right like now. Like, where is it now compared to where it was at two years ago? Oh God, really, really good. Like, like, if contract, I try, does it contract still? It's like better it? and better. But my what body fat I have left is held really loosely and flabbily, like around my my belly button. I don't know if that'll ever go anywhere. I mean, I don't see a whole lot of like ex. Like people who've lost 230 pounds doing shirtless cover shoots. Yeah. Um, 
So I don't know. I don't know if there's examples of that without surgery, without cutting it off of myself. Yeah, you could go, out, go, that. go to Beverly Hills and, and have them snip it yeah, off for you. Yeah, we're going to skip that one. <laughs> so without that, I better just put some effort into being pretty damn okay with it. And, and when I think about it, especially when I look at it against my clothes, right? Because my clothes are so huge. I know. You saved some of those. You shared something about that the other day. Yeah. Like you put on one of your old jerseys. That's the way I want people to think about it. Yeah, I look weird a little bit. Uh-huh. But the thing is, think because it, it's mostly heavy people that are asking me this question. And it's like, you're so worried about looking as bad as you think I look under my shirt that you're scared to lose 200 pounds. How silly is that? Yeah, that's crazy. Know? It's crazy. Um, but yeah, it you think about the shirt, though, the extra material in a five or a six extra large. I, some of my T-shirts were six extra large. And um, you think about the extra material in that shirt and you compare that to what extra material I have in skin on my body. My body did pretty damn good. Right. It's doing. It's winning. Yeah. There's more. There's more cotton than there is uh, Correct. skin. Right. Yeah. So I'm what co- was the what was the reaction when you posted that? It was it was uh, it was it was heartwarming. It was nice. There were comments that people make that think they're being, you know, supportive. That it, this one bothers me, and I, I hope I don't offend anybody who said it. Who, who's because a lot of people say it, so it's not like one person. But I'll post something like that, and it tell me how brave I am, and I don't feel brave at all. Like that's like that's almost confirming that I look bad. To tell me how brave it is of me. Well, it takes courage to be vulnerable. Like yeah, that. I guess and so. And to do that is a is a is 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 to put yourself in a vulnerable position. I guess so, but I can't help how it feels when I read it. You know what I'm saying? Because uh-huh. it still it doesn't it, land right. Yeah, it doesn't land that. It lands like, oh, if I look like that, I could never take off my shirt. That's the way I right. read it. You know. Right. But that's just their You're own fear. You're braver than me. They're, they're, yeah. It's just, it's, yeah. The people are, they're just afraid. They're still, look, man, there's still a lot of like stuff I, I work yeah. through day, every single day of thoughts that are twisted that I'm untwisting still, you know, getting offended when I probably shouldn't have been. And like, I'm still learning. Well, let's talk about that. be a that. better person. Let's talk know? about that because the, the weight loss thing is just a surf. That's on the surface. Sure. That's what everyone wants to talk about. How'd you mm-hmm. do that? But you know, what are the changes that have happened emotionally? Like, you know, what is this, this spiritual trajectory that you're on? Like, where are you at with all of that? How has that changed or evolved yeah. in the last couple of years? Yeah. I, um, I've never, like, I was really religious when I was a kid. Well, I wasn't religious. My family was. My grandmother was the daughter of a Baptist minister. My my Bam Bam's wife. Mm. And so it was church twice on Sunday. We'd go on, on Wednesday night. And I grew up in that very Protestant, right-wing, uh, Baptist uh, environment. And in a lot of ways, I, I railed against the hypocrisy I saw as a kid, you know, because I know the behind stuff, the behind closed door stuff that happens. And then all the stuff that happens during fellowship at church. Mm. Right. And so I've moved away from that as I've grown older in my life. Um, and although I'm not religious at all, I, I, I see where religion come, is coming from. You know, I see what it's trying to get at the more I move forward. And, and maybe it's just from getting older. Um, but that spirituality means something bigger to me than anything religion could ever encapsulate, you know? And it's so simple. It's so much simpler than all of those rules and things. And really surrendering to just living, you know, an authentic life for myself. That help that was that simple little phrase really helps free up a mind, you know, you know, to unlock and unleash your most authentic mm-hmm. self. And um, that in and of itself, like your self-love, that's your religion. That's religion. That's how you thank God for your existence. And I'm glad to have like come across that, you know, and mm-hmm. I because I feel fulfilled. I feel whole. And I feel like when, when, when you're in that place, even though I have tons of shit to deal with all and still to, that's not fun, but I feel complete. 
And then you feel like being of service for other people. It's that that continuum of learn one, do one, teach one. Well, the feeling of completeness comes from the giving back and the mm-hmm. paying it no, forward. Yeah. And, and, Another and that's thing really, I learned from you. Yeah, right? I mean, this is something that you've like really taken on. You know, mm-hmm. like you really, you really have made this commitment to make your life about giving back yeah. this gift that's been given to you in your community. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this, the Facebook group, you're wearing the, the wristband for the missing chains yep. club. I'm going to give you one. So I'll, you let, you be a, yeah, I'll, I'll let you be an honorary chin. I don't know if bro. I qualify though, because I, I don't really, I, I never got big enough to have a second chin, maybe a little dimple on no, my but chin. You had, but a vaunt. Yeah. you had a vaunt. People in Tim What's, yeah. <laughs> What's a vaunt? That's a belly, bro. Oh, uh, is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely had that. You had a vaunt. Right. Um, so when did you start that? And how did that like lead you to Good Morning America? Well, <laughs> like, that's a fun story because like, so you put me out in the social media world and then like, so then people started connecting with me and mm-hmm. other people who had lost big weight were like, oh, I lost weight too. And I'm on a plant-based diet too. And my name is so-and-so and let's be friends. And so that sort of happened, and you accumulate all of my friends, the Anthony Massiello's and the Jason Cohen's and, you know, all of my buddies, the Tim Kaufman, my pal, you know, Fat Man Rants, and all these people that I was connecting with individually. I was like, man, we should all be in the same place. And I didn't want it to be something that we were going to, like, turn into a Facebook page and sell T-shirts about and, like, because there were ideas about doing it that way. And I just sort of said, no, I want to do, let's just do a a secret Facebook group Mm -hmm. of just us. And we get to talk about our stretch marks and our deflated man boobs and how difficult it is. People don't understand what it's like to train for a marathon when you got, you know, extra skin flapping around that you got to make sure you get the right type of compression shorts for so you don't. Yeah, have those conversations that you can't, you're you're afraid to talk to anyone (laughs) about, right? With the only guys that might be able to So that's all it started. It was like maybe 20 of us. Uh Uh-huh. And one of those guys in that group is um, is uh, Eric O'Gray. He's so he's a he's a missing chin. You, you know, you familiar with his story with mm-hmm. the and so Eric said, "Hey man, this is really cool. I have a friend that works for Runners World. I think he would like to do an article on it." And that was it. And so Eric Eric um, uh, sent sent the idea to his friend at Runners World, and then they did an article on the missing chins. They came down. All of the ones that live geographically close enough to yeah. me, they showed up. We did a photo shoot in Pelche Park in Timido. Secret groups, not so secret, secret anymore. Gr- and then all of a sudden, boom. Did you let the, uh, the, the writer get access to see I what did, was on I, the page? I, get, I got permission from the guys, oh, but did? I did. Uh-huh. And, and, I, and I'll clue them in. But I also did for the girl that was... Uh, that she was producing for the GM for, for Good Morning America. Mm-hmm. So what happened was after the after the Runner's World thing, People Magazine picked it up and did a similar story. And then after that, I was just laying around hurting really bad. My back was bothering me, and um, and I was depressed. And I get a phone call, and I almost didn't answer it because I didn't recognize the number. And it was like, hey, two one two. Yeah, I don't know anyone in two one two. And so she's like, hey, I'm so-and-so with Good Morning America. And I was like, okay. Um, we would like to see if you would like to do a story, if you'd be even interested. And I was like, yeah. So ultimately, I just kept, you know, how those things go. You email a million and you mm-hmm. you get guys' hopes up because they think they want to do one thing. And then it's like you're the bad guy because you're delivering these crazy messages. of like you think, I think I'm going to be able to get all of you guys to come and then you oh only these guys can come mm-hmm. oh you got to swap it around they want this now they want it to be the, and so being the messenger and getting people disappointed and excited that that part kind of sucked but that's all that happened was they read about the missing chins and then they they it was an inspirational story for the end of the year uh-huh. And so they asked us to put together to come and if we'd be willing to come up. And so that's what it was. I called a few guys from around the the, uh, the country to represent like a w- wide swath. Right. So and how many how many people are part of that group at that point? At that point, uh, probably a hundred. Oh, a hundred. Yeah. And there were like what, like nine of you or something like that 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 showed up for the segment. Um, so there was a group of like five, no, no, five or six. Yeah, it was just like yeah, just I think it was just five of us. Uh huh. I think it was just five of us for Good Morning America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a trip, man. And uh, I just saw I when I watched it, I was just thinking, 
about what was going through your mind talking to Strahan. I wanted to talk so much smack. On <laughs> I did. I, I got to remind yeah. him about a, a, a about a, a, a forty burger that the Saints put on his defense uh, the year he retired, and he was like, "Oh, I remember." He said, "I've been trying to forget that. I've been trying to forget about that game since I retired." You know, but it was his it was his last uh, game in the dome, I think, mm-hmm. and it, they won the Super Bowl that year. So ultimately. He's he last, wins. Last. He yeah he wins. But <clears throat> they got their ass handed to him in the dome. Right. I think for me it was emotional seeing you on television because unlike the runners world thing, like this was this was about like something that you helped to build that wasn't about you. Yeah. Like you know, and yeah. that's really what it's yeah. about. Like how can you scale? Um, beyond your own personal achievements in a way that can impact people Mm -hmm. positively for the long term. Mm -hmm. And it was a recognition of that. Again, like a symbolic thing. It's not about like being on Good Morning America. It's like culture is recognizing that, that, uh, that not just that you created this thing, but that there are opportunities for a better way forward to address these problems that so many people have. Yeah. And these guys, you, I mean, look, Rich, you'd be so proud of like, they come together and come to each other's aid. Like they'll start group messages and raise money for each other to help each other buy, like buy what they need. Like, Oh, I'm, I don't have a running watch. I'm mm-hmm. saving up. We'll see. And then we'll like, either don't and we have a like a thing like when when one of the chins is about to get rid of if he buys a new watch and he'll and it's a watch that he wants to just give away or just post and say who wants it and the first guy that asked for it just send it to him in the mail like it's a real deep pack it's a community it's it's a it's tight knit and you know we had 100 people for good morning america i don't think we have more than 200 now how many how many invite solicitations did you get after that? Tons, man. Yeah. But the thing is, it's secret, so it's hard for people to find it unless they find us. They got to go look at the video, re- put, remember how to spell our names, uh-huh. and then go find us on social media and message us and ask us and give us a little story about themselves and convince us that they deserve or not deserve, but sh- belong mm-hmm. with us in our group. And um, so... It's a barrier to entry on purpose because we want the right people. We want you really looking how to find us. Uh And when you do, I'm going to probably let you. What's the the weirdest thing that you guys have had a chat about on that group? Oh, my God. This guy was um, trying to raise money with a GoFundMe or something. And it felt fishy and awkward. And so... One of the guys like researched his name and it turned out he had done like this GoFundMe fraud before. And so we start calling him out like he was trying to use the missing chins club get as, everyone to, to donate, get everyone like to feel just, sorry, to sob story. Mm-hmm. Like he was trying to do that. And then when we called him out on it, he went off calling us like 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 some of the nicest old guy like we got some older fellas in there that are struggling and trying to get their shit together and and like just be it like he just went off like talking about wanting to kill everybody and like it was crazy it was the so we had all kind of little messages going like who is this guy what is going on he's the only person that we've had to block you had to banish him. yeah uh-huh. mm-hmm. that's the lone case wow and what is the what are some of the success stories um so my buddy adam brown is one of my favorite he's this uh you know redheaded kid from the sticks i think up in I'm sorry, Adam. It's Illinois or Pennsylvania. He's up from up north somewhere. Right. And, uh, anything, but he's country. Anything, anything north of Georgia? Yeah, for anything, you north of I-10, <laughs> anything north of I-10, <laughs> yeah, bro. Right, right. And you a redneck. I don't uh-huh. know. So, 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 yeah. So, Adam, he lives up in the sticks. He lives in the woods just like we do. So, he came down um, for the Louisiana Marathon. They, the Louisiana Marathon gave us a bunch of free entries gave us like 20 entries for the marathon or half whatever you wanted just for mm-hmm. our missing chins buddies and so he drove down to take advantage of one of those this guy adam and he, we talked and we talked he was just getting started with his plant-based stuff he was i think pre-diabetic or or, or type 2 not sure but he was overweight and but he hunted and he lived in the country and he had all of these identity things that my story really resonated with him you know and uh but for whatever reason, his 
his mindset clicked. He kept, he stayed consistent. He kept trying. I could tell when I talked to him at the marathon, he was really skeptical about believing he could do it, you know? Right. And I get it because I've been there. And not I haven't worked with Adam at all. I haven't done shit. Adam has just done it all on his own. But just being a part of this organic community where he just passively gets information and inspiration – since then, he's lost a whole bunch of weight. I don't know how much, but it's it's pretty impressive to see his before and after. Um, and it's and he's got he it, he's it's clicked. Oh, mm-hmm. he gets how simple it is. And now, just like Tim Coffin and and mm-hmm. like all these other guys, Anthony Massiello and myself, it's it's automatic and it's gravity. And now it's it has just taken up the balls well, rolling it's downhill. It's momentum. Yeah, it's momentum. You get a little good. taste, of but it's not just progress. him. There's another guy. So it's a crazy story. I have a buddy who lives right next to me named Jason. And Jason is from Philly, right? But he lives in Shriver, Louisiana. And so Jason has a so Jason has lost a lot of weight. And because he's so close to me, we've run together before and we've got together online. And he he's been he fought with low carb for years and wound up going plant-based and it helped him a lot with his with his weight loss. And so he was trying to talk to his buddy, Jeff, up in in, uh, Philly. Hey, his buddy was really overweight. You should join the Missing Chins with us. We're going to help you out. And Jeff struggled, man. Jeff was, he came in and he always had questions, but it was a lot of self-deprecation in his way he was asking questions. And we didn't even really answer the questions most of the time. We just talked about the Mm self-deprecating tone. Mm -hmm. And just, man, you a bad son of a bitch, bro. What you talking about? Get up. Get your head together. And, so, you know, over time, Jeff has lost 100 pounds. I saw him. He, I didn't even recognize his clothes all fucking baggy and stuff. It's so crazy. He, I saw him at Leadville. He just comes to Leadville, and he's got just gym shorts and a regular old, yeah, like, yeah. T-shirt. Uh-huh. And it, all his stuff is baggy. And he's like, man, 100 pounds, man. And he's all excited about it, you know? That's amazing. Um, Kevin, there's, I mean, there, there's, I could go on. There's dudes on the body. There's dudes right there in Thibodeau. That are in this thing, you know, and they're 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 plant based. They're not like all out in the world about it. They don't want to be Josh about it. Like I'm doing this because I was inspired to by a mentor of mine. Not everybody has to go and get on a microphone and you do the thing your way, do mm-hmm. your thing. But there's a lot of guys that are, um, you know, changing. They get it. It's they get it. They see the power and then they're deciding how much of it they're willing to take right now. And they take bite after bite. And I think the bites get bigger as they go. You know, the community piece is so, so important. important. That's all they talked about at Plantrition this weekend. It was so massive. That's the sauce, man, for the for the change in mass. The follow up. Yes. The connectivity. Yeah. The feeling like you're not doing it alone, that there's somebody who can answer your questions. Mm-hmm. There's somebody who will hold you accountable. There's somebody who will pat you on the back. And, you know, I think culturally we've, we've just, we just live lives way more isolated than we were genetically wired to do. We mm-hmm. need that, you know, we need that to move forward. I think it's a huge part of why we've slid so far down <clears throat> this rabbit hole of disease and poor health yeah. because we're not connected. We're not being held accountable. Yeah, and we can, and, and and for me, the first thing that really sparked my community, um, or my desire for a newer community, was becoming a runner and doing my very first run group. It has you you know, people dismiss me when I talk about the running and it and it like as if it's just a calorie burning activity. It's not exercise. This is how we do it. This is how we we're pack animals. We mm-hmm. we would move bipedally in in like groups, man. This is what we do. This is how, what type of animal this is we what, are. What I was talking about with Sanjay Rawal. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That. Oof. I had to pause that one halfway through so I could finish buffering my bro. Like my eyes were rolling. <laughs> You haven't seen the movie yet, though, have no, you? No, I have not. Yeah, you'll, no. you'll love it. Yes, oh gosh, I have to. Yeah. What else was going on at Plantrition? Well, you know, the normal lineup of all-stars. Um, really cool stuff because of you, people, you know, coming up to me. Like, that was that was a really surreal thing. We we had a booth, you know, the, our Wellstart thing mm-hmm. at Howard and Yeah, Olivia I want to hear Howard. about that. Yeah, sure. And, um, but... 
we had that and people, these doctors are coming up and talking to me and I'm like a little apprehensive to talk to a doctor about some, about my expertise. Right. But a lot of them would come up to me and want to take a picture of me because they knew about me from you. Right. Oh, you want, it's one of my favorite podcasts. I tell my patients about you all the time. I got that at least, and I'm not exaggerating rich at least eight times this weekend. Yeah. Well, it's a target rich environment. Yeah, of course. It's like high but concentration. It's, of course. Of but it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's great. It's man. pretty freaking cool. I mean, that cool, means a lot dude. to me too. It's awesome. It's pretty cool to be able to, right. you know, that, you know, the last time we did the first time we did the podcast was 2013, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, that struck a chord. It was a Skype call. I'm sure I haven't gone back and listened to it. I mean, I'm sure the audio is terrible. <laughs> I have no idea. But, like, yeah. but it was so powerful that it just transcends all of that nonsense. And the fact that people are still discovering a conversation that we had literally five years ago and then followed up three years ago is insane. Yeah. You know, it feels awesome to be part like you know, to be part of that conversation. That, that is such a gift that I don't, and I know I follow myself, you know, always thanking you for it, but it's, it's just the truth, man. It, it's just such a gift that like, I'm just this guy from Chag Bay. I'm, I'm not like, I'm, I was raised in a trailer park, dude. I'm nothing special. And to have you say, Oh, look at this guy, what he holds value, man, that's huge for me. The story is super powerful. And I would say to you what you tell people in your face group, Facebook group, like why you, you know, why you, why you denigrating yourself in that way? Because yeah. what you did is extraordinary. The way you did it, perhaps even more extraordinary. And it would be a crime had you not made that decision to share your story because it's, it's a pilot light, man. It is a catalyst for so many people. Um, out there who are struggling, who just need a lifeline, who need to find somebody that they can connect with. And we all have our various ways of, of carrying this torch. And I know that, you know, I can reach certain people, Mm -hmm. but there's a huge swath of people that can't relate to me that Mm -hmm. can relate to you. And, and, you know, that's why it's so powerful, the, the, the vibration that you're carrying. And so I'm not surprised that people are still you know, saying that that was impactful for them, but you're the one just like in the way that you decided to get to work and put those running shoes on and, you know, commit to this lifestyle change and then to give it back. Like you're the one who's done the work and shown up to build this thing that you've built that has brought you to, uh, you know, places like the Plantrition Project and connected you with people like Howard and, and, and to this well start. Yeah. Um, project that you're working on and this book that you're writing. So yeah. like, tell me about what's going on with that. Yeah, that's, it all started just because, you know, another, another sort of nudge from you about getting my story in a book and like to really pursue that, that should be something that I should be working towards. So I took that to heart and I, and I, I wrote, I wrote a lot. I wrote a lot. Um, and I put together everything I could think of mm-hmm. in a very raw sort of manuscript that, I mean, it was tons and tons of my life in deep, dark stuff that I've never really told a lot of people. And I didn't know really what to do with it, you know, but uh, met up with Garth um, the year after you were at Health Fest and Garth put me in touch with, with Howard. Um, long story short, right. that's Howard Jacobson, Howard who's, Jacobson, who's been on the podcast a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, as well. and yeah. his podcast with you was powerful right. for me, and it sent me down the road to go read Whole, which the way things were put in Whole was really something that lent, it really lends itself to being okay with surrender, the way Whole is couched, you know? So it's so complicated. Forget about it. Back up. Back up. Let's just eat Whole Foods. And I got that. And that was a huge thing. And so to have the author, the co-author of that book contact me via Facebook message and said, thank you for accepting my friendship request. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so uh, we just struck up a conversation <clears throat> on Messenger. And then we had a phone call. And then one thing led to the next. And it's like, I have a whole bunch of stuff that I wrote. Howard's and, ready to like move to the bio. Yeah. And how? And so next thing you know, it's like, I'm. he's like, well, I think maybe the next step is we should meet each other. And I was like, yeah. And mm-hmm. so 
you know, over the years, Howard and I have just become like brothers, man. Just like in that 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 last podcast with you, I said I've never had a big brother. Now, like I have multiple big brothers, people who are literally like I look up to, like I would look up to a big brother. And uh, like I've shared deep things with Howard and spent long, long conversations. And so we've gotten really, really close and he knows a lot about me and he knows a lot about what went into me being able to get traction and he knows what's important along the way in my in my journey Mm -hmm. you know um and he's just a brilliant writer and so howard has been able to from writing my helping me you know get together with all of the stuff that i wrote plus writing what what he added to it to make it better right (laughs) right um all of that stuff in doing that practice at the same time we worked on this coaching platform because how really he already does the coaching stuff and he thought that i would be a good fit for that and he saw an opportunity for us to work together as a team and he and he proposed like hey we should start this this program this coaching program so we did um, and he used a lot of what he learned from my story in building the curriculum, mm-hmm. making a lot of things teachable about menu and movement and mindset and how to how to couch a lot of the things the way that I sort of couched it in my brain. And 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 so we did that for a few years. And one of his podcast guests just so happened to be this tech person um, who was building an, uh, uh, an online platform and it was going to be an app and all. And she was kind of, she was she saw what we did with our, with our coaching stuff. And she's like, I think we should have an opportunity. So we kind of, right. we flirted with that for a while and we wind up mashing together. And now I'm a founder of this tech company. Right. Right. Uh-huh. And we're going to have a native app in, uh, in about three or four weeks. We just had a oh, meeting. Wow, yeah. Cool. So we just had our first like corporate meeting in San uh-huh. Diego. That was really cool, all face to face, and I feel all like I'm part of something. It's it's exciting. It's scary because I have no idea what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing when I'm talking to people, mm-hmm. when I'm relating what we, what Howard and I have been working on and honing. Um, but when it comes to like this, the the being part of a f- startup or a tech startup, especially, I'm kind of like it's kind of overwhelming at times but it's really fun and something uh very rewarding to surrender to i have to say that's so cool far. so so it, it's called well start it's called well it'll start. be like a, an app that'll have online coaching or programs yeah of course we we'll have right. a, it's a tw- we'll have howard's built out this 12-week program and then uh-huh. we do like these weekly coaching calls where it's like a group coach on video right uh, group coaching calls on video once a week, and we have a we have a, a plant based dietitian, and we just try to help everybody orient into that growth mindset. We're not going to tell you what to do right now. We help you identify where you are, and we're trying to help you nudge into that direction of better that we've identified because you have type two diabetes or you're overweight or we've we've quantified we've made specific yeah. goals here, and so. That's that's all we do, and through a twelve week program, we do that. And I do like uh, daily, like two minute videos where we text right. the people, and I get Josh you know, isms. Yeah, I get a bunch of those, <laughs> yeah. and people love like yeah. pe- people love them. So we just keep doing that's them. Funny, and um, but it seems to really help. We had some amazing success stories in there, and I've really made some real deep personal friendships and relationships through this whole thing um, with some of the people that have been through the program a bunch of them so you've been beta testing stuff. it with yeah like of a, course I got you. yeah uh-huh. we've been we've been so doing live and do you have a date for live or you're just working no it, the the uh, the CTO said three or four weeks wow in the meeting yeah. so cool man that's exciting that's the that's the plan super and cool. that would be really cool and what was really cool was as we we're at plantrition and we have the booth out and we sort of explain what we're doing and now we have dr sarah stancic as our as our uh our chief medical officer she's because she was a fly on the wall in our program she's like oh my god this is what we need this is what physicians need and so she was mouthpiece in us at, mm. at, at plantrition all weekend it was just really surreal for me to be there and have like Michael Greger standing there talking about well start with us going, I really like this. That's pretty cool. You know, that that's yeah. amazing to me. Yeah. That is, that's amazing to me. You know, come a long way, my friend, right? 
It, but it's so, and I got it. Who knows where it's going? And it's so fun. Like every day is a mystery. Like I'm in, I'm sitting, I'm sitting at your house right now. I would have, I mean, this is crazy to me. I was just, I was welling up with tears, just driving up as the, as the, it got closer and closer. It was like four miles, two miles. I was like, oh, this God. is such a big deal. I just like am touched that you drove all the way from San Diego to come up. Man, here, I would have, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, we only got a few minutes left here and I can't let you go without spending a little bit of time trying to get practical on on some tools and some takeaways for some people who are listening who you know maybe are stuck maybe are flirting with the idea of trying to change their relationship with food or fitness or mm-hmm. trying to get into running you know what are what are the common things that people come to you with and what are some of the ways forward like how do people just you know make that start and then make it stick well we I'm going to say something that my grandfather always told me on the job site, right? Because I was always the boss's grandson on the site, and he didn't want me standing around getting caught, like, looking lazy or not doing something. And so he told me, he gave me directions when I was like, when I was very young, that he said, I want you doing something, even if it's wrong. So, so that's the first step. We got to do something. You analyze, you think, you think plant-based is a thing. Analysis well, what about paralysis. Ana- yeah. Exactly. So what we want to do is we want to do something. I don't care which step that is. I don't care what it is. We want to do something and let's get a result. And let's, let's let our results dictate the sufficiency of what it is we're doing today. And let's be objective and pragmatic about it because, damn it, we're trying to get somewhere. Let's do this on purpose. Let's do it with purpose. And let's understand that we have a community of people around us that are kind of dependent on us. It's hard to be motivated yourself when you see everybody around you failing. So play your role. Be a part. Do it for yourself. Do it for your community. Do it for the family around you. And, um, and you know, let's take the first step, whatever that is. Do it, man. Yeah. One of the things that, 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 you talk about on the regular is this idea of majoring in the minors. Yeah. Yeah. That's you a, know? yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. I love. And I think it's so true. So yeah. like explain that. Yeah. That's actually my buddy, my buddy Ryan and, and he works at the wellness center in Thibodeau and he posted an Instagram that he, that's what he called it. Majoring in the minors where you worried about all of these tiny minute details about arsenic and rice and glyphosate and your oats, but you ate chicken last night. You ate, you know, you ate pizza last night. So let's take the low-hanging fruit right now. Let's identify that and let's go after the low-hanging fruit. Let's not worry about the six fist size servings of kale a day right now. Let's stop eating pizza right now. And let's move, let's start. It's not necessarily about the food. It's about the purposeful habit change. It's about being conscious of what you're doing and doing something on purpose that's different because we want different outcomes and we understand we have the power to, to manifest those. Mm-hmm. And, and so it's a growth mindset. It's not plant-based. It's not, it's, a, it's, that's what it's about. It's about understanding how to get pragmatic and how to adopt a growth mindset and love yourself enough to, to perpetually creep forward. And when we can do that, I think everyone's going to wind up plant-based. Everyone's going to wind up a runner if you really honestly do that and let gravity have its, have its way. The growth you know? mindset thing is key because mm-hmm. I think what happens with a lot of people is there'll, there'll be a window of opportunity or some moment mm-hmm. where they're blessed with the willingness to make that change. Yeah. And they're pretty good for a couple of weeks, but then something will happen. They got to go out of town or, yeah. you know, I don't know, you know, they just, they have a weak moment and yeah. they face plant in the Papa John's or whatever. Yeah. And then they're like, well, I couldn't do it. And yeah. they're done, yeah. you know, and then they're just back to whatever they were doing. Yeah. And it's so hard to recreate that momentum. But if you really are in a place where you're adopting this growth mindset, it's much easier to just mm-hmm. get back on track. Go, okay. Yeah, that was yeah, that was that was a wrong step. Whatever. Now we're going to cool. take a right. Like, but I'm not going to like shame myself right out of the game. I'm just going to look forward. What's the next best thing that I can do and mm-hmm. get back on track and start to recreate that momentum or not allow that momentum to lose too much of its acceleration. That's exactly right. You know, it's it's just the old adage of how you eat an elephant one bite at a time. We have to. You have to 
just keep taking bites. It's con- and I get you know from you, it's it's consistency over intensity. That's what's most important, of course. You know. Yeah. And so you're at you're a plantrician, and you got a booth, and you got a startup. You're a startup founder. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, and you know you're just a guy from the bayou who did a podcast one day and then said yes when you could go meet, you know, yeah. three old ladies down the street and teach them how to cook something a little bit healthier. Yeah. So, how, you know, that happens with taking those tiny bites out of the elephant every single day. That's exactly right. You know, like the and, elephant made out and of kale. Think, and think of this whole behavior change. Think of your life. Think of this whole thing as growing something, literally, because if you think of it, Disney can make a very convincing oak tree, but it's not an oak tree, right? If you, what it takes to really make an oak tree is years and years of nurturing and slow growth. Consistent, People are impatient, though, man. Right? They want it, like they want the. What's the hack? That's that's an issue, and we we'll, let's talk about that because that's got to go away. You know, we don't want pay, that's 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 a that's a. That's in the way. That's in the way of what we're trying to do. Um, so we got we to gotta back off of that. We need, to talk about, we need to talk about planting a seed and then fertilizing that seed and then growing it and nurturing it into a tree that ultimately bears fruit. That's what, that's what we need to do. And if we can build community around that, then we have this growth medium for those roots to really set in, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's how we grow not only individual behavior change, but a movement. And how we move in a direction to not only, you know, save this country, but really save humankind, man, because it's on a terrible trajectory. And it's it's sad because it's just because of the shit we eat. It's crazy town. So much of it is. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's not that complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> I love you, brother. I could go on for another Me two too, hours, uh, um, but please come back. When are you going to have this freaking book done? It's going to be it's going to be soon, actually, because yeah. we're we're just going to give away. We we have this. We have I have a memoir of mine. That's that's later down the road. But we've basically taken everything that comprises our big our our um well well start program and put it into a, a book. A free Kindle mm-hmm. version and so just, it'll just to give it away. I see. Right. And it'll go hand in hand with the app. Correct. That's awesome. And you can just have it. And then if you don't need us, but if you want us, we're there. Yeah. We'll give you all the stuff we're going to give you. Just whatever. That's good, man. Yep. And uh, 50K in February? 50K in February. And just nice, I'll be man. taking, I'll be taking, I'll probably pace a few friends along the way for halves and fulls as I get ready. Um, but I'd like to do, a, I think I want to race a 50K before I try to race another marathon. So I really love the ultras. They're fun. Yeah. They're spiritual odysseys, man. <laughs> you know. They suck real good. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love you, man. Love you too, brother. Thank you so much. It's been an honor and a privilege to observe your trajectory. And I'm so proud of you, man. It's beautiful what you've created. And like I said, at the outset, I really do think it's just the beginning. And I, I think you're, you're just on your way to making a profound impact on culture and people. And, uh, and bless you, man. Man, bless you. thank you so much for being there for me and just being the friend that you are. You, people don't know how much of a mentor you are. You, with texting, you're constantly there for me for advice and any questions. You, you, there's, you just... An amazing human being, and I thank you very much for everything that you've done for me. It really means a lot. My pleasure, man. Uh, Josh is easy to find on the yeah. internet at Josh Lajani. I mean, Instagram's your main jam. Yeah, you're, and and Facebook too, right? Yeah, I like you're Facebook on them all. Too. You're, yeah, you're on like them all. Facebook Twitter, too. but like you're you're yeah, Facebook, you're and Facebook Instagram, dude. That's yeah, a little OG kind of out of you. <laughs> yeah, you that's know? kind of my thing. And if you can uh, find <laughs> if you can find the missing chins uh, and and compose some kind of eloquent letter, yeah, leave GoFundMe's out of it. <laughs> yes. like maybe he'll let you in. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's it, man. Is yeah. there anything about uh, Wellstart on the internet if people want to read about that? No, other than we're, you know. I don't know when I'm putting this podcast up. Maybe it'll coincide with the launch. So let me know when that is. Yeah, sure. I don't, I don't, um, 
I, yeah, I don't know exactly when the when the uh, the native app launches. We're live right now on our on our website. It act it behaves like an app on the phone when oh, you it use it okay. at, at well, uh, oh, it's well like mobile. Health. It's yeah. like mobile it's optimized. optimized right, right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's the website for that? Well, start well start health dot com. Well start. You sound like yeah. you're not sure about. No, that. it's 100. Well percent start. Well start. Right. I got the logo on my Garmin, man. All right, like, cool. I'm like all in, man. I love it. I'm so pumped. All right, man. Until we until we meet again, you can take us out. Peace, plants.